Hello, welcome to the Structure Heart Academy. So, uh, in the first session, I would be discussing about how to do a septal puncture. So, transeptal puncture is the basis of most of the structured heart interventions, especially the left heart interventions. So, for in first session, I would be discussing about the transeptal puncture, and in session two, I would be discussing how to do the balloon mitral valvotomy. So, uh, this is uh, how. Uh, first of all, uh, once we look at the septum, then uh, one thing should be in our mind. We are going to do the puncture where we have only a single layer or we have the thinnest point. So embryologically, we can see this is one image which shows in the superior portion, we can see we have the two layers, red and blue. So it is septum primum, septum, septum secundum, both. Well, but if we go a bit low, that is in the post inferior area, we can see the four valis contains only one layer, that is septum primum. So that is a thin area, and that is the area where we should target our needle. Uh, because in the superior portion we go, we have to go with the thick double septum. So that is should be kept in mind. So this is a uh, histology or open section of the heart from right side. We can see that we can see in the first on the uh, left side of image that as we see going into the RA, then IBC, and just above this, we can see the fossa valis. And just below this, we can see the coronary sinus. So there's the few structure. In this uh, RAO type of view image, we can see we uh, in superior portion, there is the thick portion, but in the bluish portion, we can see this, the fossa valis. And just above it, there's the limbus of the fossa valis. Just below this, we see the valve of the infibina cava and the valve of the coronary sinus. So we have to be very careful when we are doing puncture because these are not far away especially in LO view, many times these both are superimposed. So we have to go into the various other views like RAO to see where to puncture. So it's again an uh, image that shows that true intraatrial septum occupies only a small part of the atrial walls and can be described more as a septal surface. So triangle region which consists of the fossa valis and the area of the so superior septum uh, of the septum inferior to the fossa near the orifice of the tricuspid valve. So uh, we can see this place uh, the fossa valis uh, located posteriorly at the junction of the mid and lower third of the right atrium and is the target for the uh, for this TSP transceptor puncture. So we can see it is a, a small area. We can see just uh, here this postro inferior area. So this is the place uh, where we are going to encounter only one layer of the septum that is septum primus. So this is a thin area where we should target. So it's a postro inferior area. That should be in mind. And it should be away from the CS os. We can see coronary sinus os is there. Below the IBC is there. Eustachian valve is there. So in RAO, we have to move the needle away, uh, just giving a bright clockwise uh, uh, movement to the needle. It will go away from the CS. So in the RAO is also very important view, especially in the distorted anatomy. So uh, there are a lot of things that help us. One is the T guidance. Other is the hung method that have been used uh, if we are not using the T. So in AP view, we should put the pigtail in the non coronary sinus. And in this view, we can take around one. Uh, in AP view, we should descend in AP view because we can get various bump at SVC, at aorta, and the third bump is here. And we can see the, we can feel just, uh, uh, just one space below uh, we should target our needle in AP view and should be on the right side of the spine. In later projection, the needle looks uh, as a slight posterior towards the spine, but not totally towards the spine. So a bit about the midline and the M line. So any line which goes uh, through the uh, middle of this is called as a midline. And uh, M line horizontal means the middle of the mitral valve. And the puncture site is at the intersection of the midline and the M line. So nowadays we don't follow this because we just follow the hung method. And the easy interpretation of hung method is that in AP view, we can put a needle just one space below the pigtail. And uh, this uh, on later, it should be uh, somewhat two third and one third, posterior one third. And in RAO, this needle should look away from this pigtail to provide, uh, to prevent from any, this injury to the aortic root. And we can see this is the, pigtail uh, descending part and this needle should be in between this uh, pigtail in the ascending aorta and the descending aorta. It should be somewhere in between and we can rotate it to, uh, clockwise to go away from the coronary sinus. So these are the various views. And if we draw M line, then it will uh, cross the mitral valve annulus and it will uh, 
hit the midline somewhere. And that is the point uh, that usually uh, correspond to this uh, point uh, where we have to do the puncture. So it's a combination of various imagination in various 3D views where we have to uh, make the puncture. So uh, in RAO also we can see in RAO view this mitral annulus, we draw a line and a perpendicular to this axis, we just draw a horizontal line and that is called as M line. And we can imagine or extrapolate this line and where it will intersect the midline there, we will say that is the point, a good point where we can get a thin portion of the septum. So this is again a RAO view that uh, imagination comes into view. On the right side, we can see in RAO if I see CS, then imagine then a slight clockwise rotation of this uh, uh, this uh, catheter uh, tip should be uh, so that it moves away from the CS os because we don't want to get inside the os. And in LOV, there is a lot of superimposition. So in the figure left side, you can see the aorta just behind this. There is a narrow area of fossa ovalis that lies there. So many times it is superimposed and it appears as if we, are, uh, we can hurt the aorta. So in ROV, there, therefore, it is important of the multiple views. We should, uh, we should see in the multiple views that we don't want to hit at the wrong place. So this is the RAO and LAO view. We can see the fossa ovalis, and it is just posterior, uh, posterior to the CS os. And in RAO, we should move uh, the needle a bit clockwise to go away from the CS. And in RAO view, we can see how this blue colored fossa looks like, and this can enter the LA and then into the LV. Whereas in LAO, we can see it's the intersection point. This we can see in the RARV and LAO in between, there's the fossa ovalis, and this is how the catheter goes. So there are various aspects of septal puncture also. Sometimes we need an inferior puncture, especially uh, and uh, inferior posterior for appendage, left atrial appendage closer, and mainly superior posterior like mitral clay placement, or mitral valve in valve, or sometimes in, in BMV also. And for superior uh, approach, it is usually required in PF closure. Um, and for pulmonary vein intervention, it is mainly anterior approach. So there are the various sites where we would like to target the fossa valis. So this is again of importance of, uh, as viewed from the feed with the patient lying, so behind the plane of the atrial septum runs from one o'clock to seven o'clock, and the fossa valis is posterior and caudal to the aortic root, and anterior to the free wall of the RA, and superior and posterior to the os of the CS. So being superior and posterior to CS os, and as well as posterior to the tricuspid uh, arrest and the right atrial appendix. So it is approximately two centimeter in diameter and is bounded by superior by this number. So uh, if I say uh, we can see that in this view, this uh, needle from going to the right side uh, crossing the fossa valley is going to the left side. And in this particular view, we can see it is a bit posterior and superior to the os of the CS. So in RAO, we are going to rotate the needle. And this is a very important when a left atrium is dilated and IES is dilated towards RA. So RAO is the view when LA dilatation and interatrial septum aneurysmal, if it is there, then we have to descend the needle in the RAO view. That is very important. So this is how we should uh, take the this needle in the Mullins uh, dilator and we should cross to the uh, left uh, subclavian and we uh, keeping the needle one to two millimeter just uh, behind the tip of this Mullins uh, Dilator, we should descend our needle. Uh, and uh, once we are descending at the right place, and we'll uh, feel uh, the once we uh, from SVC to RA will see the bump, then we'll reach the bump at the aortic uh, root. And uh, this uh, after that, we'll have uh, some greedy feeling once we are many times we can feel the ectopics when we uh, touch the interatrial septum. And broken bone needle, 18 gauze, hollow needle that tapers distally with 21 gauze arrow at the uh, proximal end uh, points to the direction of the needle. So uh, this is how a finger should be placed to provide the movement of the needle and a particular angle should be made. And in the descent in the fossa valley, keep the pointer between three to five o'clock in most of the cases. This keeps the perpendicular to the septum and it starts slow descent in the LAO or many times in AP. In AP view, once there should be one uh, space, one uh, intervertebral space just below the pigtail in the root in the non coronary sinus. 
So there would be, uh, we'll feel first movement from SVC to RA, second due to aortic root, and third to the limbic catch of the fossa valis. And uh, uh, in coronary, we should uh, limit our descent not to exceed one third of the distance from the tip of the pigtail to the diaphragm to avoid the low puncture. So this is how uh, descent should be. So coming from SVC to RA, then just uh, in uh, the looking at the tip of the pigtail, the root, uh, pigtail in the root, and then we can uh, rotate uh, the position of the needle. And this is how, what is the safety uh, septal puncture is performing the center of the box and box is formed. We can draw the two perpendicular line, line B and D, and two horizontal line, line A and C. So we can see in RAO, uh, this is a bit away from the pigtail catheter in the noncoronal sinus. And um, uh, we can also uh, see that uh, it is also away from the CSOS. And we can also see the perpendicular line D. It is away from the posterior boundary of the atrium as well. So we uh, are usually in the safe margin because line C uh, marks the anterior margin of the IES. Coronary sinus marks the anterior margin of the IES. And uh, this is how we can identify the place. So this is again in RAO. It is very important. I'm reiterating again and again, and especially in the lateral view also has importance because in all view, we can see it is good. But if you see in the lateral view, in this particular patient, the needle is just facing very near to the spine. So this is uh, not the ideal position for the puncture. So the sweet spot in RAO is just between uh, these two lines uh, crossing the posterior boundary of the right atrium and along the aortic, uh, this side. And uh, this is the sweet spot. Um, just one space below the aortic uh, root pigtail. So, JD wire uh, placement of transeptal needle in a uh, catheter. So, JT wire 1, 2, 3 um, inch guide was paid in SVC, then transeptal catheter is inserted, wire is removed, and the catheter is aspirated and broken over septal needle is inserted. So, in LO, half to one vertebrae space below the pigtail, we could see, and in Lateral view should uh, midway to uh, junction of the two thirds and the one third between the pigtail and the posterior border. And in RAO, the tip of the catheter is uh, just uh, posterior to the pigtail. It should not reach the pigtail. So many times, the, some people prefer the staining of the septum. Vertical staining indicates the needle is pallet septum. So many times we have to reshape the needle with more angle. So more horizontal is better. A low puncture in the middle and the posterior one third of IES is desired for double balloon metabolotomy, a posterior but higher puncture is for inner balloon. Usually the puncture should be like higher, like um, valve in valve or this um, TMVR or mitra clip. So uh, there are some concern about this uh, size of the left atrium. If the left atrium size is a smaller, less than four centimeters, then around four o'clock, then it should be pointed at four o'clock. And uh, if it is usually left side, uh, usual left atrium, then it is four to five o'clock. But if it is more enlarged, then many times you need to rotate it more. That is more uh, six o'clock position would be required if the atrium is uh, reaching a size more than five to six centimeter. And once needle is in LA, then it is removed. And then especially curved LA wire, what we also call as a coil wire, is uh, a special solid core coil, 0.025 inch guide wire is introduced into the left atrium and Mullinch is dilator is removed. And then a septal dilatation by Fourier fetch catheter is passed over the wire for adequate dilatation of the septal puncture side and as well as the groin preparation should be done. And dilator should be advanced up to the shadow of the left bronchus, not uh, beyond that. And systemic anticoagulation of the septal puncture to prevent the formation of thrombi on the wires and the catheter should be done. So this is how the coiled wire goes inside the left atrium. So uh, after uh, discussing this, I would be coming on to the next session where would we focus mainly upon the balloon matter will what me. So this was all about in brief about the septal transeptal puncture because this is the mother of the all intervention of the left heart. So thank you all for patient, uh, patient listening. Uh, I would be discussing uh, BMV in uh, more detail in the next session. Thank you.